Weird question, but let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if you can eat your Pokemon and then like maybe work them to death? I don't think so because you're probably insane if you did. But you know what? I think it can be a little bit acceptable to be insane at times and with Pal World out in early access, you get to do that and a lot more with Pals instead of Pokemon. And you probably clicked on this video to see if this one's worth your cash. Let me say, for those who think this is just another Pokemon but they're adding the gimmick of guns, it's not really. It is actually better than Pokemon in my opinion, but it does have a few drawbacks. Hello you gorgeous human being, it's Miss Bubbles. If you love reviews and before you buys, you're in the right space for everything RPGs, cozy games, open world games, and the like. Make sure you squish the like and subscribe buttons because you don't want to miss out on all the amazing content that I have planned for you. And of course, thank you to Pocket Pair for providing me with a game code so I can make this video possible. So let's start with the presentation here and I must say the world is beautiful with different areas that showcase various biomes from tropical places to forests, the serene ocean, volcanoes, mystical ice caves and more and the fun part is that as you traverse the land be it while running around using the glider or even riding one of your pals you will see so many pals just wandering around doing their own thing and we're gonna talk a lot more about them in the gameplay section but let me tell you the map is massive you guys I have no idea how long it's gonna take me to cover it all but the good thing is that you do unlock fast travel points as you discover more areas which makes traversing the world easier whenever you unlock one it looks a lot like Breath of the Wild though, or is it just me? There's also a day and night cycle and the sunsets and sunrises are magical to look at, but when the nighttime hits, it is pitch black, so it's best to go home or have a torch on you to light the way, otherwise you're gonna freeze to death and I don't think you want to do that. The camera is in third person and you can adjust the field of view to zoom out a bit and I found that perfect because you guys know me, I have motion sickness, so I like a little bit of flexibility in my settings and if you struggle with motion sickness as well, I can tell you that fixing the field view will help you out tremendously. Now you'll meet some NPCs here and there and enjoy looking for hidden treasure, eggs that you can collect and then hatch, and resources that you can gather and use back on your farm. There are also some bandit camps with pals locked in cages that you can save and some sanctuaries with special pals that you probably should not capture and be caught, otherwise it's gonna be considered a crime and you're gonna have to pay for it. But I must say the graphical presentation is kind of let down by the sound department. You know when I first opened the game, I stayed at the main screen for about an hour, just enjoying the tunes, and I really loved them, but when I was playing the game, I rarely heard any music playing unless I was being raided or in combat. Add to that, the sound effects that are used just felt really cheap from the water sounds to whatever. I'm gonna let you guys see a segment of it. It just feels cheap, repetitive, and pretty annoying. So pair that with a lack of music, I feel like there was a missed opportunity here. There is no voice acting here, which is okay for me, so you're gonna be reading dialogue instead. And one more thing, the UI can get very overwhelming at times. I did check the settings to see if I can turn them off, like some of the options that are on the screen, but I couldn't find the answer to that. So you might find that there is a lot of clutter on the screen at times with text all over the place. Moving to the story and the gameplay section of this before you buy, I'm gonna walk you through everything so you can know what to expect from the early access version of Pal World. So story-wise, there is no story. At least for the 10 hours that I've played so far, you land in this massive map next to a fast travel point and you have this massive world as your oyster. The game starts by letting you customize your character, which I must say the options were a bit lacking. So I do hope that we have more hairstyles and more eye options and whatever in the future. And then a tutorial will help you understand what to do next which is setting up a pal box which is your base and where you get to keep all your pals. Now I made the mistake of placing mine right at the edge of this area and in the performance segment of this video I'm gonna tell you how that impacted my entire gameplay. The base can be upgraded by building whatever it's asking you to which means you can deploy even more pals in the future. From there you're gonna discover the technology tree and every time you gather resources you collect pals or you craft you're gonna gain XP. Once you level up you gain points to unlock new things to craft from workbenches to torches, bows, guns, arrows, armor, shields, and more. And the tree is absolutely massive so you're gonna have plenty of things to work towards unlocking. Some of the unlockables are hidden behind capturing certain pals so if you see a question mark it means you haven't caught the right one yet. Usually you will unlock something that you can wear to buff your character or maybe a certain gun that the spell can use or the best part unlock a saddle so you can actually ride them. The tutorial is also gonna ask you to capture pals 
towels and these are the cutest designs that I've seen in a while. They look so adorable. You also have a survival guide which explains everything you need to know because there are a lot of systems here so definitely take some time to read it out so you can know how to play the game. Now pals can either be in your party to help you in combat or you can deploy them at your base to work for you and each pal type can help with different chores. Some are good at planting, others are good at mining, some are good at kindling to name a few and they also have different passive skills which kind of make up their personality where some can really love food and they just want to eat everything all the time others are very lazy so it's probably not the best to have them working at your base others are cowards so probably don't want to put them in your team and have them in combat because they're gonna run away and leave you to die now this doesn't mean that you can just put your pals at the base and forget about them they actually have a lot of needs that you have to take care of you need to feed them you need to pet them you need to make sure that they take some breaks you have to have beds for them so they don't get stressed out you can even give them a spa so they can relax it and i find that so cute because you're actually interacting with them rather than just have them as this passive object that is doing whatever on your base. Also, different pals are found in different terrains, so once you catch one, you will learn about what kind of chores they do, what is their personality, as well as where you can find more of them. To catch a pal, you simply hit it to lower its HP, and then you aim the pal sphere, which you can craft at the workbench. And when you get a 100% chance of capturing it, then you're good to go. The more you level up your base, the more sophisticated the items you can craft, which also comes with crafting bigger and better spheres to capture more majestic pals. And Get this, you have over a hundred of them to find and take back to your place. They also have different elemental powers and skills that you can give them. I mean, I have over 70 in my pal box in just 10 hours, so imagine how many more we're gonna have as we play more of this game. And whenever you capture 10 of the same type, you gain a lot of XP, which you can use to level things up like your HP, your attack, your building efficiency, your carry weight, and more. You can also breed pals, though I haven't gotten to experience this mechanic yet, but that's that is freaking awesome if you just want to breed a couple of them and kind of make up your own unique very strong pal to play with now keep in mind you have a stamina meter which will be used as you gather resources climb mountains swim and use your glider you also need to eat so you can either eat food raw or cook them and you will be impacted by the weather so make sure to unlock different armor to suit wherever you're going next you'll also get weighed down if you carry too many things and if you overdo it you literally won't be able to move at all so make sure that you have lots of chests all around your base and make use of it because you don't want to get stuck like I did a lot of times. And an added feature that I really liked is that the chests can be locked with passwords. So in case you're playing with other people, this is a really good touch if you ask me so you can keep your precious items safe and not have to worry about your friends wanting to troll you at times. And it's important to mention that the tools that you use will degrade over time, but repairing them is very easy. So it's not like Breath of the Wild where you feel like items and tools are degrading very quickly. It does take a lot Long time and then fixing it is actually very straightforward and very quick. Remember the day and night cycle that I mentioned? At night it's best to go to bed and sleep which is gonna recover your HP and advance you to the next game. So with that comes building a foundation and decorating your base to your heart's content. You can even build plantation beds, bars, traps, gates and so much more to make the base feel like home. And make sure you build some defenses because you're gonna get raided. Now I got raided twice by NPCs and that's how I I got to see the guns in this game for the first time and when I defeated them I got a ton of loot which was fun but it was also hilarious to see my pals kick their butt and put them back in their place. Speaking of which, in combat you can switch between the pals in your party and let them out in the wild to fight alongside you or you can use them as shields and that was pretty tragic to do to be honest there are some unbubbly behavior that you can execute in this game which like this game just doesn't take itself seriously at all which i am all for but you can literally butcher your pals you can you can eat them if you want to and you can work them until they just don't want to live anymore <laughs> i'm telling you it is just severe unbubbly behavior combat was fun so far you can dodge to the side or backwards you have a variety of weapons to use and it was very smooth to fight but let me tell you what wasn't smooth was that first boss fight I dealt with. I was at level 16 and I had 1000 HP while the boss had 35,000 HP and safe to say I did get the floor wiped with my character's butt and my pal it was terrible I'm not doing that make sure you're well equipped before you go to any bosses but these bosses can be found in towers and they're kind of like gym battles in Pokemon and as majestic as these pals look you 
can actually capture them and have them for yourself once you defeat the boss. I mean, look at this one. He kind of looks like Pikachu who's on steroids and had a lot of mass gainer. I also may or may not have died a lot of times, but the good thing about this game is that difficulty levels are very customizable. So I chose to go with casual, which means if I die, I can just respawn wherever I want to and don't have to worry about losing my tools and my items. But if you choose the more difficult difficulty levels, then you're gonna have to pay for that consequence of dying. Now, while I shared a lot of fun parts of the gameplay mechanics in Pal World, there are a couple of things that you should probably know about as it is in early access because it might deter you from buying it for now. Pals can be dumb. I placed my base at the edge, but I had no idea that deploying pals would be done behind it. So many just kept getting stuck in the water and didn't know how to come back to the base. And even those that did make it back to the base, they easily get stuck in places. So it's best to build around the center and avoid edges but I feel like with that in mind, you really can't actually customize the base to your heart's content. You're gonna have to be very careful with what you're doing. Also, my pals just refuse to eat at times, even though I have so much food for them, and then they freak out, and they get moody, and they want to take breaks and not work anymore, and that was pretty annoying. Also, the game is not going to pause when you are in the settings or checking your inventory. Now, this is because I chose the multiplayer version of the game, because I do want to play with my friends when it releases in early access this week but still keep that in mind if you're playing in a you know multiplayer game then you just can't pause the game which is normal but I know some of you don't like it so I'm telling you about it. Another thing I wish I can change is the point of view when building the base. It would make it more approachable to build my dream home where I'm seeing it from afar rather than the first person point of view and as I mentioned earlier sound effects really put me off. They were really annoying and repetitive and also some of my pals just kind of glitched and and they would just throw out a bunch of resources on the floor and I would get stuck because I'm picking up all of it. So good times. And another thing is that I have no idea how to move things around. All I can see is that I have to destroy them. Even when I'm trying to move my base because of the place that I put it, it's just not working at the moment. Moving it actually means destroying everything and I kind of don't want to do this and set up everything all over again. So I wish I can just move my base more easily. And finally, I did experience overall a lot of bugs which I'm gonna tell you more about in the performance section. Now let's talk about the fun factor for a second because it's gonna determine why you're gonna actually play this game and get the replayability value out of it. And it's pretty much the pals themselves. You have over a hundred of them each with their own stats, personalities, and overall they're so cute. You can pet them. I mean, look at them. They're so cute. They make you smile like a kid. And this is definitely better than Pokemon in my opinion. At least the Scarlet and Violent ones that released last year. And yes, I'm gonna call it Violent. Island. Also, the map is insanely huge. You have so many caves and dungeons to explore, locations to visit, and treasure to collect, and seeing pals wandering around and watching them interact with each other. Like, it's really fun. Some of them are literally gonna be fighting each other, and you just end up grabbing the loot because they kill each other. Add to that, it's really cool to go from capturing these small little cute pals to eventually very big and majestic ones, and it really makes you feel like there is progression in this game. And as I mentioned, the game has time where it just doesn't take itself too seriously which is a welcome feature for me like how you can use a pal as a shield or butcher you can even eat it like why would you do that but i know some of you are very unbubbly and will probably eat your pals which to each their own <laughs> I also want to address the performance in Pal World, and remember, again, this is an early access game, so things are gonna change the more updates we get, but I did get some pop-in here and there, and generally the game was running smoothly, no quests were bugging out or no crashes happened so far. The problem is mainly with the pals. Again, they get stuck a lot, they don't eat when there is food ready for them, and over the course of a few in-game days, things will get frustrating when you're trying to grind and level them up. I also tested the game on the Steam Deck, and was was pleasantly surprised by how well it runs there. The initial loading screen was surprisingly quick and the only time I saw some lag in the game was as I initially started my playthrough and maybe some pop in here and there but after that it was actually really smooth and I was really surprised even when I was in massive areas with a lot of pals roaming around it was running really well so nothing was game breaking or annoying this is definitely bad gaming approved. Before we break down if Pal World is the game for you we're gonna give our bubbly shout out of the 
day and you can be one in the next video all you have to do is squish the like button and leave a comment below this video's bubbly of the day is going to shadow and they said i think it's safe to say that regardless of if you're interested in any of these or not not to forget the numerous games that weren't listed here there's bound to be at least a couple rpgs for everyone this year and really that's great triple a indie niche whatever it's a good time to just play and enjoy what we like and maybe discover something and i totally agree they love this comment on the collab that i did last week about the 40 upcoming jrpgs of 2024 and man oh man is this year a crazy one 2024 is an insane one for jrpgs i had 40 in that video right after i published it there was like 10 or 20 that got announced after and it's just gonna get worse i don't know how we're gonna do it so cheers guys because we're eating good but also we're just <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do this. I think we got this. Hopefully we got this. By the way, if you're looking for a place to play these JRPGs and talk about them as we tackle them together, check out my Discord server. I'm gonna pin it for you in the description box. Now back to the video, we talked about the good and the bad of Pal World, but the question you are here for is Pal World the game for you? We're gonna go with this game is for you, if not for you, if and my personal verdict. Pal World is definitely the game for you if you're new to the open world crafting and survival games. The difficulty mode lets you customize your experience, making it accessible for beginners. Add to that the tutorials and the quests to upgrade your base are very straightforward and easy to do. It's also for you if you love games with a massive tech tree making progress fun and constant for you where you're always unlocking better workbenches armor shields weapons and more it's for you if you love cute creatures that you can capture and use their help around your base it's for you if you love decorating your own space slash home base it's for you if you want to play games with your friends now i did not test the multiplayer because my friends don't have the early access version of the early access so i got to play it before everyone else but once they do i'm gonna test it out and we'll let you know how that's running but we can all agree the most important part is gonna be to see how well the servers run when the game launches and it's for you if you love supporting early access games and seeing how the devs develop it over time Pal world is not the game for you from the get-go if you don't like supporting early access games there will be bugs and things that don't work your way and quality of life features that you wish were implemented it's not for you if you hate grinding this game is a grind fest it's all about getting the next best thing and unlocking more and more features from the tech tree it's also also not for you if you don't like open world games with freedom to go anywhere you want without guidance of a story. As for me, I have mixed feelings about Pal World. I did enjoy my time with the pals. Again, they are so cute and adorable and I feel like there is an innovative idea going on here. I also loved exploring the world. It's massive with so many biomes to visit and the tech tree offers so many things to work towards. Like really, this is better than Pokemon for me, at least Pokemon Violet and Scarlet again yeah I call it violent but but my play sessions were hindered by the bugs and my pals just being uncooperative at times and it felt like there is something missing maybe a bit more NPCs would make this fun or more of a story incorporated that would add more lore and just meaning behind the world would be appreciated because the world does feel a bit empty when you are just looking like it's a massive world and just feels pretty much empty the developers plans for pal world are ambitious to say the least so it will be fun to see how the game shapes up as it progresses through its early access stage but i must say i might be dropping it for a while to see what else they add in the future are you buying pal world or are you gonna get it on game pass or is it maybe a skip let me know in the comment section and if you want to know about the best 40 upcoming jrpgs through an amazing collab with my content creator friends check out this video next this video is made possible by my bubbliest community in the world my patreon and youtube channel members a special shout out to them a special shout out for you for for watching this video and a massive shout out as always to the game dimension jacob stephanie steven and jake logan for going the extra mile until next time stay bubbly